Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 12, Chapter 2 Outcomes and Preparation, Part 2. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. When Benamaru brought out the third sheet of paper, there was a chart of the left and right wings of the army. The number of troops we possessed so far was listed on the right. The first corps, commanded by Gobta, had approximately 12,000 soldiers. The second corps, commanded by Geld, had approximately 37,000 soldiers. The third corps, commanded by Gabal, had approximately 3,000 soldiers. In total, there were around 52,000 men. This was the entire standing army of the Tempest Federation, and in my opinion, it was quite a scary number. As a result, Benamaru and I had pondered the question of what actions we should take. Once war breaks out, I'll recall Geld and his men, this was the original plan. However, even that would not be enough. Although the Western nations appear to have their own armies, mobilizing them would be a massive undertaking, indeed. We went through all that trouble to gain control of the council's military authority, so it'd be remiss of me not to utilize it. With that being said, doing so may cause some major backlash, moreover, if problems began to occur within the Western nations, they'd have nothing to stop it. If that happens, things may get tough later on. It wouldn't be an issue if it was within our borders, but if the citizens of the Western nations start to question our leadership, it'll make it harder for us to do our job in the future. Exactly. And so, we repeatedly went through this back and forth exchange. Benamaru's response to these concerns was probably the army's left wing that was written on the paper. Let's take a closer look at the breakdown. Western Reserve Force, 150,000. Mixed Majin Corps, 30,000. Volunteer Corps, 20,000. These numbers are huge, but what sort of army is this left wing? Time being, they're soldiers under our command. The aforementioned army that belongs to the Western States Council is the Western Reserve Force. Unlike the armies of each individual nation, this one is hired directly by the council, or rather, largely hired through our funding. Why is the number so high then? After the disbandment of the previous army, the new one surprisingly increased in numbers. According to Testerosa's report, rumors spread like wildfire claiming that you could earn a living if you enlisted, which ended up attracting a lot of recruits. But wasn't the purpose of this force just to maintain public order? Why would we need 150,000 soldiers? Regarding the matter, Testarossa stated that this was the result of what the nations requested. Testarossa had seized control of the council and pushed for a bold structural reform. I was aware of that, but it was apparently causing more of a stir than I had expected. On that note, many of the larger nations are also demanding the trains to be operational as soon as possible. In other words, they felt like there wouldn't be enough manpower relying on our nation's engineering unit alone, and therefore even mobilized those they hired as logistical support? Correct. And that didn't seem like it was enough, which is why they decided to hire locals to help. Is this the reason why the number of troops is absurdly high? I gave Testarossa full authorization as the military attaché and told her to not report minor details of things to me when verifying policies. Due to my orders, it appears that this was news even to Benamaru, until very recently. The result was this mass recruitment. Wouldn't that just be playing right into the hands of these nations? By making us train their engineers, they could operate more easily later on. Apparently, that's not it. If that were the case, those nations wouldn't merely hand their engineers over to us like this. Wait. So what you're saying is you took Testarossa's newly trained support troops and incorporated them directly as the Western Reserves? That's correct. Testarossa was going to discharge them because she had no more use for them, but it would definitely be a waste. Indeed it would. I figured that we could prepare work for them, so I made the decision to organize and name them the Western Reserve Force. I get it now. That was a nice call, Benamaru. That is not something worthy of your praise. On to the next order of business. Now that we got the Western Reserve Force cleared up, what's this mixed Majin Corps? There's 30,000 in total, are we conscripting monsters from the Great Jura Forest? It's a corps composed mostly of Majins who were under Clayman. Geld had them working as prisoners of war, but I picked out and borrowed those who were decent at fighting. At the same time, the high orcs who had nothing to do after completing their construction work filled in the missing gaps. I thought they weren't being cooperative. Thanks to Geld, none of them are selfish miscreants anymore. Besides, even if there were someone that stupid, I would have personally shut them up. Well, yeah, it's easy for Benamaru to subdue people by force. But, you know, 
they just got used to the job, so forcing them to fight is kinda. This is something they've been saying. We want Rimuru sama to see that we can be useful too. Good food, good friends, bosses who rely on them, and rewarding work. They kept going on and on about how their strength should be used to protect all of this. Seriously, this was a happy little miscalculation, and their offer was very helpful. I could sense their motivation, and I'm sure their feelings are genuine. Besides, people from all over the Great Jura Forest have heard rumors of the upcoming war and have offered their assistance. This mixed Majin Corps is the unit that brought them all together. Although I have removed the weaklings. Yeah, that's great. With this move, they could really do their best, the thought made me glad. Lastly, we had the Volunteer Corps. This was a unit derived from humans residing in Tempest in neighboring countries. The total number of these people was 20,000, and while we couldn't expect too much from them, they were still a considerable force. Well, that's everything on the left wing. The only difference between the right and the left wings is the level of loyalty to Tempest, or rather Rimuru-sama. The right wing troops are those who are willing to risk their lives for Rimuru-sama in this country. The left, in contrast, is a hodgepodge of different people with their own agendas. Some of them may truly have noble aspirations, but we didn't have time to conduct personal interviews, so we had to organize them like this. I see. Behind me, Xi'an and Diablo were nodding their heads in agreement. So, the last question that remains is who we should appoint as the commander of each corps. This was where we finally got to the heart of the matter. Well then, let us begin with the Western Reserve Force. This corps was by far the largest. Its allegiance was with the council and its members were scattered all across the region. Looking at sheer numbers alone, this wing is a large army of 200,000 strong. That said, I do not intend to move the 150,000 soldiers of the Western Reserve, so they will be deployed where they are stationed, I suppose. Technically, they're a unit under the command of the council so we could move them at our discretion, but I believe there's no need to summon them here. I think so too, although it wouldn't be impossible for me to organize them with my power, I'll maintain the status quo as far as the Western Reserve Force is concerned. The corps commander is also absent but I'm thinking of having Testarossa, the military attaché, take on that role as well. I think that's for the best, but if war breaks out, Testarossa may be asked to return home as well. I'm worried about whether or not they'll be able to keep in touch with each other when that happens. Don't worry, Moss can handle a few hundred companies. Yes, I heard that from Sue too. Moss is working with him on intelligence, but he can also take care of inter-unit communication in his spare time, really? Moss. What a handy guy. Then, shouldn't Moss be the corps commander? No, that would rather be bad for Moss, indeed, given Testa's temperament, it would be rather miserable for Moss. Not that it's any of my business but I do feel a bit sorry for him. Okay, let's appoint Testarossa as the provisional corps commander then. Testarossa would serve as the corps commander. This was a temporary appointment and I made it clear that she would be replaced when there was a suitable candidate. That should take care of the Western Reserve for now. Next was the mixed Majin Corps. How about we leave this to Benamaru? I recommend Rigor Dono. Hum, I think I'd rather leave this to Benamaru. As for this mixed Majin Corps, let's call it the Red Numbers from now on. Select a couple members of Kuranai and have them each lead battalions of 1,000 soldiers. This will be the 4th Corps, and Benamaru, you will be the Corps Commander and take direct command. I understand. If that's the case, please leave it to me. Since he had the unique skill, Generalissimo, under his belt, he could easily compensate for the unit's lack of training. He was the perfect choice to handle such a random assortment of troops. Lastly, we had the Volunteer Corps. What are we going to do about the Volunteer Corps? That's the problem, the Volunteer Corps consisted largely of humans. Benamaru was evidently worried that appointing a monster as the commander of such a unit might stir up unnecessary discontent. That's true, if word gets out that humans can't get ahead in a monster country, our reputation is going to be damaged. Anyone who complains about such things is a weakling and a failure. We can't expect them to make it big anyway, so there's no need to worry about it. No, Xi'an, I mean, that's not completely wrong, but it'd be easy for people to believe that if they don't know us. I see, humans are difficult beings, but is there truly no one else more suitable? You aren't wrong, they're volunteers, after all, so they're an unplanned addition, as far as I'm concerned. Yet, not taking advantage of their offer would be a waste. Well, I don't know what to do. What about Gerard, who is under Sue's care? Not possible. We took him in as part of an undisclosed deal with the Kingdom of Ingratia, and I doubt he wants to be seen in public, how about asking the Holy Knight Order for help? Benamaru and I glanced at each other, then stared at Xi'an. 
We can't do that, can we? No, that's not, that's not possible. Then, how about Masayuki Dono? That's it. That was impressive, Sheehan. At that moment, we locked in Masayuki as the commander of the Volunteer Corps. Although the decision to appoint him was made without his approval, it was a wonderful choice that everyone could agree on. Masayuki was the only person that remained skeptical. Why should I? When I revealed the news to him, he had his head in his hands. As for me, I've gotten pretty good at using my unique skill, chosen one. I don't feel like I'm being praised for everything I do anymore, like I used to. But now, I can't use it even when I try, so don't expect too much, okay? Don't you want to show Kenya and the others how cool you are? If you go along with this, I'll let you off the hook for teaching the kids questionable stuff and gaining their respect. Don't worry, you can do it. But, no buts. Didn't I help you with your fight against Gozer? Thank you for your help back then. You understand, don't you? Yes, I understand. I owe you a great deal, Rimuru-san, and I'd like to repay a bit of that debt at times like these. This is how I thought things would end up. Well, well, I'm sorry that I made this decision for you, but please shine brightly as the beacon of hope to inspire everyone. Thus, the 20,000 members of the Volunteer Corps were led by Masayuki and fell under the banner of the hero. We had the home field advantage. We also had Veldora's presence nearby and the cooperation of demon lords like Ruminas and Leon. Milam also promised to help us out. Carrion said that his Beast Masters Warrior Alliance would always be prepared to deploy. And as my personal trump card, the black numbers under Diablo were at the ready. We did not take into account how Yuki would act. War, huh? Did the Empire really want to annex the Western nations? Guy had mentioned the word, game. There seemed to be some kind of connection, and perhaps the Empire had some disturbing ulterior motive. But even if that were the case, I don't care who comes, if they try to mess with our paradise, we'll crush them. Meanwhile, within the Eastern Empire, preparations for the war were moving smoothly forward, just like in Tempest. They had planned meticulously for a long, long time, all for a major offensive. Soon enough, the Empire was about to awake from its slumber. The days before their ferocious advance steadily counted down.